The 18th of August 2024, you're very welcome back. The war, well look at, uh, my father used to say, he lived through the Second World War and he used to say that he'd have it on the radio. He had a radio that you could get various stations, a big radio, a valve radio, take a while to come on and he could get, even Lord Ha Ha, he could get the UK channels and he could get some of the German channels and radio ch and channels from elsewhere. He wasn't a radio ham as such. It was an ordinary radio, but he could do get a lot more in it than other people could get. And he had an exceptionally good aerial out the back and a way up around the trees and everything else. So like that, the attitude and the atmosphere at the moment in the world is a bit like that. Here in Ireland, we're not in a way related. I mean, the only thing effect it had in Ireland was there was the LDF and there was emergency, as they called it. There was rationing of tea and there was rationing, rationing of other products. And there were some Jews brought in, some Jews brought into Ireland, into Wicklow, by De Valera, but not too many. But uh, uh, with the present situation, you have this war going on out there, and it's not getting any better. Uh, and there seems to be a total and utter lack of common sense. There's a, um, uh, a new lad taking charge of NATO, that's Sternberg or whatever you call him, he's going, there's a new fellow taking over. But in any event, uh, there is two pieces of news. One, as you know, the Ukrainians have invaded Russia in the Kursk. Uh, it's K-U-R, I think it's S-K, it's Kursk, anyway, and over there in that area. And they thought to get to a, a nuclear power station. They didn't quite get there. But they've blown up a few bridges there, there's no doubt. They've done a lot of damage there. And uh, Putin will not be too happy about that. Um, some say he's just letting them alone. Uh, he has evacuated his people out of there. It will be heralded by some. There you are. You get what you, you reap, what you sow. And all of that. But one point I want to bring to you. And I cannot get it on any computer now. But I was listening carefully to a, a YouTube a video by some Western general, some commentator. It wasn't Colonel McGregor and it wasn't Scott Ritter, but he had military experience and he had a good lot of information. And someone might be able to know if this is the case, but he said that Russia has blown up a bridge between Moldova and the Ukraine. Moldova is in the south uh, west part of Ukraine and would you believe it there's an, en an enclave of Russia in Moldova it's a strange thing and there's an enclave of Russia just alongside Poland a little place uh, along there now um, Kalani Kaliningrad or something is named it but the Russians have an enclave and a checkpoint Charlie and all that in Moldova somebody might want to say why but the point is that this is not anywhere the motive for it appears to be to stop the West bringing in provisions, munitions and all that. There's a rail bridge which is still intact and there's a road bridge which has been destroyed. Now that's according to this person I heard. I can't stand over it. I'm just bringing it to your attention that that would mean that the only way weapons and stuff and provisions can be taken into to Ukraine is via Poland that could concentrate the routes in uh, through Poland. How true that is, I don't know. Somebody may may, 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 may know a bit. Now, there's, there's the K-E-R-C-H, I think it's K-E-R-S-C-H, or K-E-R-C-H bridge. That's the bridge going from into Crimea. That's the, the main bridge connecting uh, Crimea to Russia. And that has hit hit a few times. As I understand it, it's still it's still there. It was Putin's dream project, a big, big long bridge, several kilometers long. The Kersh K-E-R-C-H, I think it's Kersh Bridge. I'll just get it here. Yes, it's the Kersh Strait Bridge. Strait S T R A I T bridge. But the place in the in Russia is Kursk, K U R S H, I think Kursh. And and just to sound alike. So just bringing that to your attention. Uh, it's not on the mainstream media, but I think there must be something to it. The person talking about it seemed to know an awful lot, and he says, "There now, you have that cut off. There's still a rail line, a rail line leading from Moldova into uh, into um, Ukraine, but there's no. The road bridge has been destroyed. That's my information." 
again like everything else we only can go by what we hear uh, a lot of ukrainians perhaps looking at my video maybe some of them are feel bad at what i'm saying uh, it is tough on them i mean they're totally relocated this is what happens when politics doesn't do its job i can't do anything about that uh, right we'll see you back for something else uh, we have a, a, an absolute war developing in that ukraine area and anything's liable to happen neither side is going to yield and particularly the west uh, but one of the things i know about war is that in the american civil war one of the great things that they had was uh, factories and industry and foundries making weapons and making trolleys and making carts and everything and, and rail traffic in the north the south didn't have that and the south had to melt down church bells of brass to make revolver frames and some types of rifles as well the barrels of the cannons in some of them are are brass they're not um they're not cast iron as you'd expect them to be or steel and in the 1798 rising in ireland i mean the irish had the pike and the thatch that was the best they had british had guns and mus muskets and all of that stuff and it would give them a big advantage but at the moment the russians are far better equipped and prepared militarily than the west they are really really scratching scraping the barrel for a place to make uh, uh, artillery even to make ammunition um sporting ammunition for rifles uh, shotguns is not affected but for rifles in ireland is gone up about 45 percent you know rifles for um hunting and vermin and all that gone away up in price so so the thing is that uh, that's the, that's one of the the big mistakes and 10 years ago when they were waxing lyrical and flaking on about climate change and climate change and the race to the bottom on who could build the most windmills uh i told them would you not copy yourself on this you have more important things to worry about and of course they wouldn't listen and now you have a, a dearth or a scarcity of industries to support any military campaign and that's a mil an army or a military with no back up by means of food but also by means of weapons and provisions is doomed to fail doomed to fail we'll see you back for something else comment underneath bye